This is the part where I'd normally say, welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today I am going to say, welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> say, 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 come to the madhouse. Come to the madhouse. <laughs> Anyway, this 24 drive RAID enclosure that I unboxed on my video blog a while back and then I posted an update that I was working on a crazy 24 hard drive build inside is finally done to the best of my ability. So I Frankensteined this build together with an old uh, DFI X58 board that I had lying around. I threw a Core 2 Duo processor on there. I went and added an SSD drive as a boot drive. Now this power supply is a 1200 watt power supply. Totally overkill for this rig because at its maximum it draws 700 watts from the wall. I'm using just some random Corsair cooler on here. But where most of the magic is happening is with this Arica RAID card. So this is a 24 port RAID card that hooks into the back plane that is built right into this case. So you can see I've got six power connectors here and six data cables and that is where all of those hard drives are able to connect. So we're using 24 one terabyte hard drives an 80 gig SSD boot drive, and then just for benchmarking sake, I have a Revo Drive X2 installed in a PCIe 4X slot, so we can find out just how fast file copies can go with a huge RAID array. So for my first random experiment of the night, I am going to demonstrate what a RAID 60 can do for you. So I have two giant RAID 6 arrays, that means that Either of these two 12 drive arrays can afford to lose one of its drives, or rather two of its drives. So I can actually lose a total of four drives from my array to physical failure in the middle of a file transfer. So I'm copying about, uh, or rather I'm, yeah, I'm going to copy paste about nine gigs of files over to my RAID 60 right now. So you can check out the performance. It's copying at, uh, about 300 megabytes per second and I'm gonna come around to the front of my RAID box here and I'm just gonna pull out drives. I'm gonna pull out that one and that one. This is not a trick folks. So these are two RAID 6's where I have pulled out, see you can see the performance went down a little bit when I pulled out the drives but the files are still copying because I actually don't need these drives to be functional in order for the RAID to work. Now if they were actually dead, I would want to go ahead and replace them with something new and rebuild my array as soon as possible, but that is a pretty cool thing about RAID 60. This array is entirely functional. It is a 20 terabyte array, by the way, using these 24 drives. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop those guys back in. And it will have to rebuild now, but we have no time for that. So I'm going to be reconfiguring it to a RAID 0 now. And we're going to test the maximum performance of a 24 drive RAID 0 by copying something from that Revo drive, which is rated at about 700 megabytes per second, to uh, the 24 drive RAID 0. Now here's a concept for you guys. You know when you buy a 500 gig drive, it's not quite 500 gigs because of the different ways that you can measure one gigabyte. It can either be 1024 megabytes or 1000 megabytes, depending how, you, how the manufacturer defines it. Well, what if I told you that with your drive, you're going to lose over two terabytes of space in the math conversion. <laughs> so this is our 24 terabyte. Uh, RAID 0 array right here. Now I would never, ever recommend in any kind of production environment actually running 24 mechanical drives in RAID 0. That's incredibly stupid. Never do it. It's all about performance. If even one drive goes down, you lose everything. But just for the sake of, of fun and games, we're going to go ahead and do a quick copy paste. This is about 9 gigs. Actually, you know what? Let's do these separately. I changed my mind. So we're going to do the random files. So this is files of various sizes, like uh, game files. Uh, I'll find out the size for you uh, first before we do this. So it's a 6.65 gig thing of like random files. So this one's going to take a while. But uh, go ahead, put on your timing hats, and we'll find out 
how long it takes to copy from the Revo drive to a giant RAID 0. Now remember, this is real life, so I've run synthetic benchmarks on this RAID 0. It comes up around 650 to 700 megabytes per second, but when we're copying little files, you're going to lose a lot of performance in the overhead that's involved with those tiny files, so it's still going at well over 300 megabytes per second for most of it, and it is done, just like that. And now we're going to do big files. Okay, so these are 1080p movie files. It's about 2.68 gigs, so this is going to go fast, guys. Here we go, paste, and it's on. And 500 megabytes at the start, slowing down a little bit, 364, 325. I don't know how accurate this is. The only way to find out is to actually do the math and time it. So uh, that was it, that was our file copy. Now, here's something to watch out for. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a practical demonstration. We are playing a video from uh, a little kiosk about the WD uh, My Book Live. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull one drive. So I'll pull this one just arbitrarily and that video is going to stop. Windows Media Player encountered an error. RAID 0 is not safe. So I threw my drive back in. The RAID 0 is running again without any problems now that it's refigured out that everything's actually there. So I went ahead and ran Crystal Disk Mark for you guys who care about that particular benchmark. So you can see that in a synthetic benchmark we're getting read speeds over 900 megabytes per second and sequential writes up around 850 megabytes per second. Now it's all performance. Never do this as I mentioned before but it makes for a kind of a neat little demo. Now, the hardware that I'm using today isn't something that I consider proper server grade hardware other than the RAID card as well as the enclosure. So this is the kind of thing where you'd actually want to have like a server grade board, you'd want to have proper server grade hard drives. I'm just using WD one terabyte blacks, which are not ideal for RAID. This was just for demonstration purposes, but Thank you for checking out our tech tips today on the sheer ludicrousness of a build like this, uh, which was mostly just for giggles. And I want to show you guys something pretty cool about uh, sort of industrial level hardware. So hopefully you can still hear me in the mic. So I'm going to go ahead and show you just how loud a system like this is if you wanted to build yourself a little storage server, because why not, right? So here, hold on. So here I'm going to put this inside the case. Oh. And then I'm going to unplug the fans now. So now we're down to just the desktop fan. So that's the one on the CPU as well as the one on the power supply. And you can see it's uh, quite a bit quieter. So speaking of... I'm just going to reattach my mic here. Speaking of whether you would build a storage server for yourself or not, I want you guys to leave a comment under the video telling me what you would do for your own personal storage server in your house and also, what would you store on your very own 24 terabyte server?